you go and turn to ice Ice tables are an important part of an acid-base equilibrium. Anytime you are given a concentration of acid or base and asked to find the pH value, you will need to do an ice table. This is due to the equilibrium of the dissociation equation involved. Remember, I stands for initial concentration, C stands for the change in concentration, and E represents the equilibrium concentration. When dealing with the equilibrium constant, or K value, we only use equilibrium values. We never use the initial or the change in concentration. We can therefore solve for the initial concentration if we're given all the equilibrium constants, and we can also solve for the change. So the first example we're going to be dealing with is the following one. Formic acid is the irritant secreted during an ant bite. The irritation is partially the result of an ionization of formic acid. The equilibrium equation for this reaction is Formic acid plus water produces a hydronium ion and an HCOO minus ion. The pH of a 0.1 moles per liter solution of NaHCOO is what? What you first have to notice about this example is that we're not actually dealing with the formic or methanoic acid. We're actually de dealing with the conjugate base NaHCOO. Because of this Na, or because of this sodium ion attached to the HCO, it's actually a proton acceptor. So the Na is a spectator ion. It's not actually involved. So you can actually ignore it and cross it out. So what we're left with is the conjugate base of the methanoic acid, which is HCOO minus. Because it has that minus sign, it actually can accept another hydrogen to become an acid. So it is a conjugate base. Because of that, we're not dealing with the acid equilibrium constant. We're dealing with the base equilibrium constant, which is a Kb value. We're not ever given the Kb values of anything. We're always given the Ka values, if anything, which we can find in our chemistry data booklet on page 8 and 9. So we know the Ka value of HCOOH, or methanoic or formic acid, to be 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. And what we can do is we can go Kb equals Kw divided by Ka to calculate that Kb value. So how we're going to do this is our Kw, or equilibrium constant for water, is always 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. And we're going to plug in that conjugate acid Ka value, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4, to calculate our Kb value. We can therefore use this equilibrium constant in our next step of our equation. So now that we've calculated our Kb value to be 5.56 times 10 to the negative 11, we can do an ice table. The issue is we're not going to use the equilibrium equation given in the question, we're actually going to use the base equilibrium constant. So we're going to have to make that up. As we know, bases, such as HCOO minus, when added to water, always create an OH minus, or a hydroxide ion. That's formed because our water breaks down into our, H, our OH value. That water, therefore, is donating one of its hydrogen ions to our base, and it's creating methanoic acid. Okay, so the reason we had to change our equilibrium constant is because we're not dealing with an acid, so we're not going to form that hydronium ion. We're actually dealing with the base, which is a proton acceptor and creates a hydroxide ion. From there, we can deal with our ice table. As in regular ice tables, because our hydrogen or our water is in liquid form, it's not included in the ice table. So you can initially cancel that guy out. Okay. In the question, we're actually given that our initial concentration is 0 0.10 moles per liter of NaHCOO. That's the same for HCOO minus, which is just without the spectator ion. So you can plug that in as your initial concentration. Because at an equilibrium, when you first start, you have zero 
of the product side because there's no dissociation, you can start those as zero. Now, we're not sure of the equilibrium values of these, and therefore, we're going to have to calculate them. How we do that is we know that we're going to lose some of our ions to create the products. So we know we're going to change by negative x on the reactant side. Because we're losing negative x on the reactant side, we're going to create positive x in a one-to-one -one ratio for both of them. So we're going to add x on either side. Okay, and then what we can do is we can make, create a reaction or an equation. So it's 0 0.10 minus x. And then our OH value should be x and x. Now when we plug this into a K equation or an equilibrium equation, we're never going to deal with the initial or the change. We're always only going to deal with the equilibrium values. How we're going to do that is we're going to actually plug in K equals products over reactants, just like we've done in previous equations. So our K equilibrium is always equal to the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. But first we have one other step. What we're going to do is we're going to see if our change even matters or if we have to actually solve for that 0 0.10 minus x, or if we can just neglect the minus x altogether. How we do that is we take the initial concentration and we divide it by our Kb value if it's a base. If it's an acid, we'll take our initial concentration and divide it by the Ka value. So how we're going to do that, we're just going to go our test is equal to 0 0.10 divided by our Kb value, which is 5.56 times 10 to the negative 11. And if that is greater than 1,000, which it obviously is, we can neglect this x. So we can actually just scribble it all out. From there on, we're going to plug this into our k value. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've calculated our kb value, we've plugged in our ice table to determine our equilibrium values, and now we're going to plug into our k equation. So our k equation is products over reactants, as long as there's no um, coefficients in front, we have no power, so we're fine. So what we figured out is our products are methanoic acid and hydroxide ion divided by the HCOO minus ion, or the base of methanoic acid. Okay, The cake equilibrium value, therefore, we're going to plug in our values that we've determined in our ice table now. So we have our methanoic acid, or HCOOH, is an X. We also have an, our OH value, or our hydroxide ion value, as also an X. So X times by X. And we've determined our initial concentration hasn't really changed that much, so it's negligible. So it's going to be 0 0.10 moles per liter. So what our equilibrium constant equals to now is X times by X divided by 0 0.10. In other words, it's X squared divided by 0.10. How, how we solve for our x value is we're going to plug in our kb value that we've calculated at the beginning into our equilibrium value. So we're going to go 5.56 times 10 to the negative 11 is equal to x squared divided by 0 0.10. Now in order to get that x by itself, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply by that 0 0.10 on both sides which cancels out our 0 0.10. And then we're going to square root the value to get rid of that squared sign. So our x is actually equal to the square root of 5.56 times 10 to the negative 11 multiplied by 0 0.10. And we're solving for x. So now that we've solved for x, and it's 2.36 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter, we can use that x as our concentration of hydroxide ion. Now what we're going to do with that is we're going to change that into our pH, which we learned in grade 11. So we're going to go back to our grade 11 learning, and we're going to deal with the pH. So our hydroxide ion concentration is directly proportional to our 
hydronium ion concentration, which we can calculate. So we can do this two ways. We can either calculate the hydronium ion concentration using that hydroxide, or we can calculate our pOH, which is a little bit easier. So we're going to do it that way. So what we're going to do now is we've calculated our OH concentration to be 2.36 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter. What we're going to do is we're going to use our pOH cal calculation using the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide to calculate the pOH value. So it turns out our pOH, when we calculate it in, is 5.63. Because it's pOH, there is no unit value, so we're good to go. So what we can do now is we can calculate our pH using 14 minus that 5.63. So our pH ends up being equal to 8.37. And in our equation, or in our question, we actually only have two sig figs. And remembering that our pH sig figs are only representative of our decimals, we have the correct sig figs, and we've solved for our pH. This is what we wanted to do, and this is excellent. So ice tables really aren't that hard. They are a little bit difficult, but you'll use them so often that you should get used to them. The steps for what we were doing today were as follows. First of all, we're going to determine the equilibrium equation. If it's an acid, it's going to dissociate into H3O plus, or hydronium ions, and then whatever its conjugate base is. If it's a base, it's going to be added to water to create a hydroxide ion and whatever its conjugate acid is. So it's going to gain a hydro hydrogen from that water. So our first step is to determine the equilibrium equation. Our second step is to calculate the Ka value, either using our book, our data booklet, or we're going to calculate the Kb value using the equation Kw over Ka which we can always find in our data booklet, like I said. The third thing we're going to do, we're going to set up an ice table. Remembering I is the initial concentration, which is usually given in the question as it was today. Um, the C is the change, which is usually a minus or a plus X, and the E represents the equilibrium, which we'll be using in the actual equilibrium equation. Finally, we're going to check whether or not it's uh, greater than 1,000 by doing the initial concentration divided by the Ka if it's an acid, and the initial concentration divided by the Kb if it's a base. If that number turns out to be greater than 1,000, you can omit the minus x in the equilibrium form from the initial. Then what we're going to do is we're going to solve for x using products over reactants. So we're going to have K equals products over reactants. We're going to solve for that x. Usually it's going to be x squared over a number, so you can just solve for x normally, and then you're going to use that x, which is going to either be your hydroxide or hydronium concentration, and you can use that to solve for the pH or the pOH, dependent on what your question asks. Hopefully you can use all these steps and you can have a great time using ice tables. I know I had a great time.